A very good method of learning to digitize is to pull a design apart and try to understand how it was put together and what the digitizer was thinking. Then add your own flavor to the design and analyze the result. Let's take a look at this wonderful chalkboard style embroidery and identify the methods and settings used to create it. For me, the most noticeable feature and a new free stitch type to Embroidery Studio 4.5 is the hand stitch effect, which gives a great style to this chalkboard advertisement. You can see almost every component in this design has had hand stitch effect applied to it. It has been applied to satin stitches, tatami fill, and back stitch outlines. The settings provide for a large number of effects, giving a more rustic, organic look, or a smoother, but still hand-drawn slash stitched impression. Let's take a closer look. Firstly, the hand stitch settings can be found in the effects section of the object properties box under the hand stitch tab. Or more easily, right click on the icon at the right hand end of the stitch effects toolbar. Beginning with the word fresh at the top of the design, you can turn the effect on or off. The length setting does exactly as suggested and randomly adjusts the length of the stitches. The angle setting randomly changes the angle of individual stitches and creates the rougher look of hand stitching. The count adds repeats of the stitching and therefore makes a thicker column or increases the mass of the stitching. Randomizing again roughens the look. The developers have kindly added 10 set variations to the settings so you can imagine there will be an effect to suit your requirements. Exactly the same settings can be applied to the backstitch and to tummy fills in this part of the design. Next on my list is the string stitch. The original vector objects are single vector lines. Applying the string stitch property creates these unique pineapple eyes. The shape of the vector file can dramatically affect the look of each object and again changing the spacing and cord gap affects the intensity of the stitches. The next part of the design I find interesting is the detail in the leaves and around the pineapple. Firstly, all the objects have been branched to eliminate thread trims. I'll break the objects apart to demonstrate how this works and I think we'll find some other interesting features. I can see all the objects are column C. For those of you who are familiar with column C, you will know this tool creates columns of stitching of a constant width and yet these all vary in width. Looking more closely, I can see the digitizer has used the angle setting to adjust the column width, and the stitches now run in a set angle relative to zero degrees, therefore affecting the width of the column. Okay, back to the branching. Turning TrueView off, I can see there are lots of connecting lines and the design information tells me there are 203 thread trims. The branching tool is located in the Arrange toolbar or the keyboard shortcut is the letter I. The process is to select all the objects you wish to branch and select the tool or use the shortcut and click twice, once where you want the branching to begin and again where you want it to end. I'll start and finish in the same place and immediately the trim count reduces to 100 saving 103 thread trims. Notice the shading in the base of the pineapple. Let's add some style of our own. I'll delete the top layer and apply some Florentine fill to apply a nice curve to the stitches. Then reapply the top shading, choose the profile and spacing to suit the design.
Notice the 3D effect in the motive fill on the orange. The pattern distorts as it moves towards the edge of the design, giving a globe effect. In fact, you can create a globe in, a globe out, or a perspective effect and change the shape of the effect with the reshape tool. And of course, there are dozens of motive patterns to choose from. Looking at the segments of the orange, I noticed three features. Perfectly symmetrical shapes, a line of stitches in the segments, most likely created with the custom split tool, and a jagged edge around the inside edge of the outline. In this case, created by the segments that are stitched over the white border that have already been stitched. Let's add our own flavour to this. First, I'll duplicate a segment and a separating line to use as a template. Now select the Complex Fill tool, the colour, stitch type and activate the user defined split. Digitize the shape Enter the stitch angle and the shape of the user defined split Then create the separator Now, with the mirror merge tool, select the wreath tool and repeat 8 times around the center point Now to add our own technique to this, select the ellipse tool to create the outline and add a jagged edge to the inside. By creating the border after the segments instead of before, we have eliminated at least one thread trim. There's no right or wrong here, only a different method of approach. To make sure there are no unnecessary thread trims, select the objects and use the keyboard shortcut letter J to apply the closest join feature. And finally, there are two fonts in the design you will not find in your software. This digitizer has the font creator element and is able to make custom fonts. The font creator also allows you to convert two type fonts to native ESA files which enables the features like auto kerning and the user refined letters. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Look for the specialty videos which deal with each of the topics covered in this masterclass in more detail. Thanks for watching.